So we have previously covered our flexor zones. We've got zone one, the DIP. We've got zone two from like mid shaft of PI, mid shaft of middle phalanx to um, the head of the MCP all the way across. Um, we've got zone three, which is in our palm. We've got zone four, which is our wrist. Zone five is wrist, like basic forearm. Forearm is zone five. Um, for zone five, that's gonna be mainly musculotendinous repairs, and we're not really gonna do a whole lot with them because any movement isn't going to mobilize the suture site. Um, but zones four through, like one through four, you know, four and up, wrist and up, um, we are gonna tar do targeted therapy because we're gonna move them. So let's go over the zones again one more time, and let's go over the anatomy and what we would mobilize. So for zone one, remember again, that is at our DIP, our flexor digitorum profundus attaches um, at the base of the distal phalanx um, on the volar aspect. So we've got our FDP, it's attached right here. We've got our um, DIP joint. And so to mobilize our uh, zone one flexors, we're going to do DIP movement. So we're gonna do DIP blocking like this. PIP blocking rather, um, to do DIP isolation movements. All right, so then zone two, we're gonna be focusing on moving the PIP and DIP at the same time. So we're gonna be incorporating our flexor digitorum superficialis, which attaches right here, which is the base, the volar aspect, uh, the base of the uh, middle phalanx. And then again, remember our FDP attaches up here at the base of the distal phalanx. So to mobilize zone two, we're gonna do do it on this hand. We're going to do DIP and PIP together. Okay, so to do all fingers at the same time, we could do our hook fist. That's great. Great job. All right, so that's DIP, PIP together, zone two. Zone three, we're going to be incorporating all three joints. Three is great. So three for me, three for you. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, so zone three is going to be um, our DIP, our PIP, and our MCP. So that's when we're gonna go into our full composite fist. So we're doing this, everything's great, it's awesome. Zone three. Zone four is bringing in the wrist. So we're gonna do full finger and wrist movements like that. Zone five, again, I already said that um, we can move while we want zone five, it, or try to move while we want zone five. It's not gonna work though. Um, it's not gonna move the suture site. So that was those um, zones on the thumb, the thumb. So we have zone one at our IP, zone two at our MCP, and zone three is the metacarpal bone. Um, I, I guess zone one, zone two, and then zone three, like all of it together. I don't know, it wasn't in the slides. Anyway, I'm just making that up. Maybe or may not listen to me. Um, so management, if it is um, non-operative, so we're just kind of taking a conservative route, we're gonna put them into an orthotic, we're gonna put them in a slacked position. Um, we're hoping that scar tissue is gonna come and fill in um, the slight tear, but it may or may not work, and quite often it will fail. So. Typically, the route to go is to have an operative procedure. So for operation, um, again, they're going to be placed into a slacked position because you don't want to stress those uh, tendons just yet. Um, after about 48 to 72 hours, then you'll start wanting to stress them. Controlled stress. That is the key, key word, controlled stress. Um, yeah, and that's going to be our complete lacerations. Um, will definitely need to be taken into the OR immediately. So post-op, we've got um, controlled mobilization. So we're wanting to control movement in a specific way, um, especially with our zone two, um, because there's a lot of stuff happening right here. And we really wanna make sure that we're able to um, 
take care of these structures. We're not letting anything get caught up or stuck on anything. Um, we want to just make sure that there's really nice gliding of the tendons and um, that, again, nothing is getting caught up there. So we're wanting to limit adhesions. We're wanting to maximize tendon glide and tendon excursion. Um, and then there's several different protocols that can be followed. The surgeon will tell you what protocol he or she wants you to follow. It could be a um, early passive mobilization, it could be an early active mobilization, or it could be an immobilization protocol. It just kind of depends.